Look at what we got what here, we boy. Greeting me this morning. It's a big old, well, it's not too big, but a little baby snapping turtle. Glad I didn't walk out of here barefoot and open up the rear door. Hey, buddy. All right, good morning party people. It's a beautiful day outside and just took a break. Had to go back down to the eastern part of the state. Um, saw some family that I haven't seen in a long, long time. So it's always good, but it's always uh, unfortunate to meet in those kind of circumstances. But nonetheless, we are back and we are working on the van again today. We're getting closer and closer. I'm ready to light this baby up with some electricity. First, I've got to uh, put some polyurethane on the wall behind where the two uh, electrical boxes are going to go and then caulk the bottom where the two pieces of birch plywood meet. And I'm just going to do that one section. I'll probably put a few coats on it, sand in between it. And once I'm done with that, then we're going to move to putting both of these boxes in. We're going to screw them down to the floor and we're going to put some electricity on this bad baby. And we're going to turn on lights. We're going to turn on the fridge. We're going to get the solar work in. We're going to get all the monitors working. Um, all of the AC work in so that's my plan for the next couple of days. So uh, let's get to it So as usual typical Home Depot run I already had the polyurethane uh, But I uh, needed to go get some foam rollers. I think this will work with polyurethane and some dust mask and some sandpaper to sand between coats and uh, also picked up some of those magnet door hinges don't work when you don't have like really really square wood uh, to made up against so I got some of these clamp door hinges and I put one of these on the battery box already and it works beautifully um, I don't think it will rattle much because I got one of those double roller ones um, that kind of clamp on the outside so that would be cool but anyhow let's get to it all right so while I am uh, working with the polyurethane I'm gonna do the bottom of this battery box because it sits directly on the vinyl flooring and I had to cut some of the screws short and grind them down. So I'm going to put a couple cups of polyurethane so it'll be easy on the flooring. Because I've already torn up the flooring a little bit there where it sits. I've got my fan set up. Hopefully pull a little bit of air through this fan. I'm going to go open the driver's side door as well. And uh, I've got my drop cloth down. First thing I've got to do actually is sand down some pencil marks. Um, and then once I do that, should be able to start doing the uh, polyurethane. Alright, so I think I got all the pencil marks out and so now I'm going to wipe it down with a with some denatured alcohol. Alright, so I'm going to practice on the bottom of this box first. So I'm going to wipe it down with alcohol, denatured alcohol, and then we'll start. First coat's on. We'll give that a couple hours to dry. We'll come back and sand it and uh, put another coat on. So that's as far as I wanted to go back. Just one piece of plywood there. So uh, the rest of it I'll get the ceiling and that I'll get at a later time. I just wanted to cover this so I could get my boxes in there. And I put it on the whole panel in case it turns out a different color. So at least it'll be a different color on the back panel versus the front panel instead of blotchy all over. So. All right, let's go uh, check out the box and see if it's uh, dry yet. All right, I think she's dry. Let's uh, give it some sandpaper, 220 grit. So it's a very fine sand. Just try to remove some of the top imperfections off before we put the next coat on. All right, I definitely saw where I missed a couple of spots. I'm gonna make sure I uh, Hit that this time and uh, I think we're ready to start rolling on. So we'll move to the box first and then we'll come back to the van. All right, ready to start rolling. So by the way, in between coats, what I do is I put the whole uh, paint tray, roller and foam brush in a uh, trash bag, close it up and then put it in the refrigerator. And that keeps everything soft and compliant in between coats. All right, let's do it. Guys, that'll do it for today. That is three coats and probably about all I'm gonna put, especially behind all the boxes and stuff. So I'm gonna let that dry and uh, start putting some boxes in here. Gonna run my uh, electrical from the batteries under the seat and uh, 
get going from there. I finished putting the first coat on both of the boxes on top and the fronts and uh, that one side there. So get a different view. So I'll let that dry, come back and sand it tomorrow morning and uh, we'll have a uh, hopefully we will light some electricity into this van it's a new day all right so we've got the boxes uh, just kind of leisurely sitting inside the van now and uh, i pulled the bundle of cables through and made sure i put some protector on it there so my next task is i want to terminate all of these uh 12 volt cables and uh, probably do the AC outlet there first. All right, so these are gonna be my chassis power and ground sources that I'm gonna pull into my bus bars here. And uh, so I've gotta modify the lip of that battery box, kind of like that little loop there where that cable's coming out, the little cut in the plastic. Cause I've gotta get two more cables through there. So let's do that. I got all of the, uh, I got my hot and my ground for my alternator charge hooked up to the bus, to the chassis bus there, and that runs up to a fuse up there and to my lithium ion battery monitor and to another fuse and then to a shutoff. So, and I also have the ground bus pulled in and then I have the ignition, the 12 volt switch ignition pulled into the magnetic ignition switch bus up there so really all I have to do now is connect the two boxes together with uh, with two slash O cable and uh, they'll both have ground and uh, hot but before I do that I've got a bunch of things to do number one I've got to put the batteries in I've got to put the inverter in I've got to wire the inverter up and I want to finish wiring this AC panel up as well so let's get to it Those shallow box outlets are a pain when you got a bunch of when you got more than one uh, circuit in there. So then I started to put the inverter in and I run the AC. All right, so I ran out of uh, two O lugs, so I can't uh, cable up the inverter or tie the ground bus and the hot bus together today. So I had to make an order for those. And so now I'm gonna turn my attention to actually terminating all the, the, uh, the different loads. So the lights, all the 12 volt outlets, and all that stuff to the 12 volt fuse block. And uh, we'll go from there. Let's get to it. All right, so I screwed the two boxes together. And I also, the boxes to the floor and then I screwed the boxes to the wall. They should be pretty solid. Um, it was kind of a beast to get to down there but uh, managed to get it. So now I'm going to continue with the DC fuse box and I'm just writing stuff down here while I'm going and I'll just keep these uh, diagrams in the uh, either in this box or in the dash. That way I'll have them. One side down, one side to go. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm done with the uh, 12 volt DC fuse panel. There's one the e-bus cable I need to figure out how to run down to the inverter and then move the other cable over to the battery monitor but uh, I'll do the research tonight and come back tomorrow morning and do that all right party people here's the uh, 
So the idea, idea here is that you could either have somewhere to sit, because I can remove this panel. You can either have somewhere to sit, or you can have somewhere to put your, uh, your laptop, whatever it may be. But I use it for a step to actually get onto the bed. And I can't cover the entire thing. Otherwise, I'd have to put a flip-up lid on it, and then that would be in the way, because if you think about it, I'm going to have a sink over here. So I only want to be able to pull out the fridge so far, and the top needs to be uncovered. So it serves a purpose, and the slider works fine. So I can pull this in and out. And uh, so, yeah. So also uh, got some handles on the uh, doors. I'll probably take these doors off and router around the edges. And I might even put some banding on here because I've got this on the backwards. But uh, I'll put a little round over bit on it and uh, maybe press some banding on the edge. I'm not too concerned about that now. So I have completed all of the wiring. And I've got my main power feed run down the side here so I've got to put some of this tubing over it to protect it but I've got the inverter wired up and just need to put the batteries in all right so all right boys let's put our batteries in first let's uh let's just see if we got any voltage across our solar cell here so I think it said we had about 62 volts so that's good. I'm going to do one kind of final walkthrough just to make sure that I've uh, got everything in line. first time I put them in while well, they were in the box on the bottom so I had to mold that big 2.0 cable or 2 slash o cable around in order to get it to fit so that's what we're working with I got all the circuitry shut off right now so uh, I think what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna take the shut off for the batteries put it in line I'll turn the fuses make them in line and we'll see if we can get some solar charge down to the batteries then I'll just enable each part of the circuit to test it out as needed. So let's see here. First thing I want to do is I want to turn this shut off. Check that I've got the 250 amp fuse in there and uh, turn the shut off for the batteries. And so there's my fuse. This is the shut off. So we'll turn that on. Looks like we've got power to stuff already. Our fuse in line. There we go. Alright, so it says we have 13.3 volts. Um, we're charging about somewhere between 10 and 11 watts and about 0.3 amps right now, 0.4 amps. It's really cloudy out there. So if you can see that it's a pretty cool screen I've I haven't turned the AC on yet so we're at 13.3 volts and we're charging at a, at a few watts there so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the uh, Victron on the multi plus uh, inverter so there's a shut off for that and uh, see if she powers up. Shows up. I wonder 
our screen here at some point. Alright, so zero watt loads. It's inverting. So the one thing we can do is uh, we can uh, go to our DC fuse block now. So there's a um, another shut off here and we put some fuses in our fuse panel and see what happens. We can also turn our AC circuit on and let's see what do we have to plug in this is a switch they grab some fuses that fuse is in a light an AC light circuit out because something uh, something's hosed in the wire in there I thought the switch is going to control the outlets and it's not so we've got one circuit back here even by the tire right now there we go we got lights plugged so that worked so we're good on the AC let's go put some DC fuse in and see if we can crank the fridge up Alright, the battery guard on the uh, 12 volt side is not kicking in. I'm not sure if it's because I have it grounded out or what. Let me take that off and see what happens. Otherwise, I'm just going to bridge it. Alright, party people. It is uh, nighttime out here, but... So I figured out what the problem was. I've got the fridge running now. So apparently on this battery guard, it needs uh, the signal terminal needs to be tied to low to ground. So I just kind of messed around with it a little bit, and uh, so yeah, I created a little jumper there between the ground terminal and the signal terminal to hold it down low, and you got DC. So let's see. Let's see if I can plug my phone charger into the outlet here. See what happens. Will we get the charge signal? There we go. Wasn't plugged in. So see if you can see that. At the top, the little battery indicator. Got the little lightning bolt through it, so it's charging. Nonetheless, it's night time and I've got to, I'm going to close this end off as much as possible because I noticed when you look at it from the outside, you can see all the equipment in here. And even though I'm going to have a curtain, I don't want that to, I don't want to accidentally put, put my arm in it. So, there we go. I'm going to let the fridge cool down tonight and uh, 
see how everything does. So that was pretty good. Only missed one thing on the wiring, so cool down. The fridge is pretty cool. It has Wi-Fi as well. So actually, I need to get up there and test the fan out and see if it'll run too. I haven't even tested the rear outlet yet. So let's see. The step works beautifully though. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. Push it up. Like some nice air flow under here. All right, party people, it got dark on me. We got electricity in the van. It's freaking awesome. You may notice too, I also have a microwave behind me. My microwave came in, so I've got to be building a cabinet for my microwave. And I'm gonna test it out in the, uh, in the inverter, the AC part, to see if it has enough power to actually run this microwave. We'll test this out in another episode and I'll walk through a lot of the uh, electrical componentry. All right, hope you enjoyed the content. Give me a big thumbs up if you did. Comment down below if you're building out some solar or electrical in your van. Tell me what I'm doing wrong or what I should be doing better. Comment, subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it super helps the channel. Please do so and click the post notification bell. You'll get, up, you'll get notified of all new uploads and you know what to do. Till next time, skill up and ride, go out in the dark and fan up and go.